Well, greetings everyone. Welcome back to Rob's Workshop. Now, in this video, I'm going to be completing the crankshaft, hopefully. Um, I need to machine away as much of the uh, waste material between uh, both pairs of crank webs before sticking it in the lathe in my fancy tool that I made in the previous video and I can turn the crank pins. Um, I put a mark on each of the crank pairs to show how deep I can go safely go with the uh, the end mill uh, the setup was just simply in V blocks as you'll see in this photo so off we go to the mill and start removing some metal so I've already started milling away the material here um, this side here uh, is down to 0.2 yeah 0.21 wide um, which is a wee bit more than the final size of 1875 but I'll leave it like that because uh, I've just got a few there then to take off in the lathe um, what I've done is I've used my DRO I've zeroed the uh, the side there on uh, absolute and now what I'm doing here is uh, gradually reducing the width of that uh, on the incremental scale when I get down to the same thickness by 0.2 or so I'll zero it on the incremental so I've got like two zeros to work from I can go back and forth as I work down to the line and uh, yeah plenty of milling it's very slow I'm using a small cutter because uh, there's not much of the uh, stock in the vise it's not the best of um, uh, grips I suppose you call it um, but I'll just take it easy light cut small cutter back and forth and I'll get there just the same here we go then Check, see what we've got. Thickness the there. We have point two one oh. Okay, then I'll leave it at that actually. So I'll zero the DRO. We're in incremental now. So that's the point I can work to when I work on that side, left side, and absolute on the right side. So uh, I'll do the rest of it off camera because these are going to be very long and uh, tedious. So I've got the uh, crank pin turning tool up in the four jaws, you can see, all um, dialed in. This is uh, nice and straight. What I did was put a piece of drill rod, drill rod or silver steel in here, clamp it down and then clocked it to make sure it was straight. It's not 100% straight, there's about a thou or so distance difference over the full length of about 4 inches, 5 inches sticking out. So over the 3 eighths width of the final crank pin the error will be tenths probably. Okay, uh, fiddly job now. We need to put this crankshaft in here. Three jaws are tight and the top one isn't because that's where the slot is. Right, get that in there. Make sure it's well bottomed out. Now I've got to get these shims in here. I don't know if you can see the gap there. As I said in a previous video, these these uh, uh, crank pins are only held by brass shim, um, so I've not damaged them. And I've lost the shims. Oh, I All right, bear with me while I fit the 
these things. one that's not going to fall out put the other one in Come on, in you go. Oops. difficult. Never mind, we'll get it in. Hmm, what a fuck. I was thinking maybe the uh, pressure from these jaws was closing that in, but it's the, the, the slot isn't that deep anyway. It shouldn't influence that. This is very strange. Let's make sure that's not... what was wrong. I didn't back off the screws on the other side enough. Stupid me. Okay. Right, I need to... Just nip up. little Allen screws.
to keep my hands out of the way so you can see what I'm doing but as many people will attest it's easier said than done that's one okay and then final nip good let's go and know that okay <coughs> time to I need to sort out my uh, turning tool, it needs a bit of a hone, so I'll get back to you when I'm ready to start cutting metal. Well I've had fun and games with turning this crank pin. Um, I tried all sorts of uh, tool configurations and shapes and so forth, speeds and feeds, but at the end of the day I think it was just um, very hard in this area here because once I got underneath that it's been machining all right what I did do was relieve the center of the cutting face at the front there uh, I got this tip from Joe Pye when he did uh, a similar job in one of his videos just relieve the center section of the uh, tool reduces the tool pressure and uh, minimizes well it reduces the chances of chatter um, took ages to do the at least the uh, the crank pin is parallel and it's slightly oversized uh, so I can polish it up improve the surface finish a bit and get it down to size at the moment I'm machining the inside of the crank webs to thickness these have to be 0.1875 so I've only got a few thou to go and we'll uh, take another measure shortly before I started doing this particular bit of machining I did zero the tool when it was uh, when I'd finished the crank pin so I know how far to go in on the y-axis out again. We'll have a quick measure, see what we've got. Three five. And four. Do some maths. And seven thou. Right. Another five thou and another measure. Thank you. 
chapter 7. Right, I'm going to stop there, it seems to be spot on. So, move across. Uh, I'll just touch off on the other side. Um, do a very light cut, measure it, and then take it from there. Here we go. And just touch in there. We'll zero the x axis again. Use it about twelve thou, twelve thirteen thou, uh, too thick when I started because I wanted to do this at the end Go down to one nine seven. One nine seven. One eighty seven. Ten thousand. So I'll just take five off and do another check. I forgot to mention was when I was getting close to the 
finish diameter for the crank pin because the tool is so springy it's narrow widthways and height um, there's going to be flexion in its during operation so I went back and forth at the same setting quite a few times uh, just to take any spring out of the tool instead of just one cut and then hope for it hope for the best. I should really take this out of the jig to measure it as I did that one but uh, I don't want to disturb any settings. One nine three, one nine three, ninety three, six. I think what I'll do, I'll get the, the uh, my adjustable power. I'll stick it in there. This is the size. The overall width is exactly uh, seven fifty. So this should be uh, three eight or three seven five when it's when this is down to size if you if you follow me. And anyway, I'll check all that off camera and we'll finish this off. Right, the webs are down to thickness. The uh, uh, space for the connecting of the fit is down to size. Crank pin's a little bit oversized, so I'll do a bit more polishing and. Uh, assemble it again see how it is. So watch your fingers with this operation. You've just got fingertip control on the ends of the tape. If it catches on anything and just pull it out my fingers. The finish is quite good and quite pleased with the finish. Switch the power off, of course. Let's see how this goes. This is fiddly. Now don't drop it into the swarf tray, Robert. You'll never find it. And what have I done? I've dropped it. Come out. Gotcha. Yeah, it's a bit, bit tight that. Yeah, 
a bit more polish than they do, I think. And there's certainly no... No smack. <laughs> yeah, a bit more polish. I'm pleased with the fit uh, that way. It's quite a nice fit, that. But uh, I'll do more polishing off camera and I'll get back to you. Pleased with that, that's a nice fit, there's no discernible slack, it's a little bit, oh, it's not even tight, but uh, it'll certainly run in easy enough. Right, I'm going to take the thing out now. Grab my shims before they fall into the swarf tree. There we go. That's not too bad, that. I'm quite quite pleased with it. Got to do the same at this end now. Wish me luck. But I'll do all that off camera. Right, I've got this... Uh, the uh, connecting rod fitted is still a little bit snug on the uh, crank pin so what I've done is I've put a load of oil on, bolted it up and a bit of cotton down here if anything goes uh, pear shaped the cotton will snap um, yeah I'll just flash it up and let it run for a bit, it'll run in a bit at least this is not wobbling about which is uh, very important. If this is oscillating back and forth it means the crank pin isn't parallel to the main journal or that way. Any sort of wobbling about this end means there's no uh, there's some incorrect alignment of the pin. But we'll just let this run for a bit. Like that. It's dead steady, there's no, no wobbling. Please with that. Just got to do the other end now. Oh, blimey. still a bit snug. I'll just let it run for a bit. I'll get back to you when it's all done. So there we go. Finished. Quite pleased with it. And this uh, last, the second crank pin was much easier to turn than the first one. Um, the uh, skin was uh, much harder on the first um, crank pin I did. It took a long while before I was down to softer material but this one was was quite quick um, good fit I'm quite happy with the fit uh, what else can I say nothing really or oh, jury's still out on counterbalance weights I'm not sure what to do yet I'm gonna play around with uh, some designs on my computer on my CAD program and fiddle around with that and I may or may not go ahead with the uh, the idea of uh, counterbalance weights, but um, watch this space. 
okay that's it for now um thanks for watching thanks for subscribing and i'll see you again in the next video until then wherever you are take care and uh, see you again bye